All right, so today we're gonna to look a little bit about graphing statistical data. We've been talking about statistics lately. That's collecting, analyzing, and presenting data. And so this is one of the ways that you can present data. And we're gonna look at four main types of graphs. These are probably the most common ones you'll see. Uh, line plots, bar graphs, stem and leaf plots, and histograms. Um, we'll start off with looking at a line plot. Line plots are also sometimes called dot plots, um, picture plots. There's You've probably seen them before. Um, they're very common. And they, what they do is they really show the frequency of data along a number line. When I say frequency, I mean how often that number comes up. So let's say you had a list of scores on a math quiz right here. I've got 16 scores, and I wanted to present those in a line plot. To do that, I'm going to make a number line first that fits the scale. So when I say the scale, I'm looking at all the numbers that I have right here. The smallest number is 1, biggest number is 10. So my scale is going to need to have 1 through 10. So there's one right there for us. And then all we're going to do is simply make a dot, an X, or a symbol for each instance of data. So if we looked up here, we can see we have an 8. I'm going to cross off the 8, and I'm going to put a little X right there to indicate that value. And then I'm just kind of work, going to work my way as I do that. And I'm going to cross off a number, and each time I cross off a number, I'm going to put a little X down here. Um, I like to cross them off because that's a good way to keep track of them don't have to but I think it's helpful and so you can see again I'm just kind of quickly going through and putting a thing for each one so we got a one over here and a seven right there so now we have you can see we've stacked all of our numbers we show the frequency we can see how common those numbers were and that right there is an example of a line plot. That's it. Uh, another type of a graph that is kind of similar to a line plot is called a bar graph. Bar graph is also showing the frequency of different categories of data. So let's say we had something like this. So we took a survey, we collected this information about these four different flavors, and so that's how many people chose each flavor, and we wanted to create a graph of it. Um, to do that, and you're just going to make categories. Right now we've already got our categories. You can see they're presented right here. And then we're going to draw separate bars to show the frequency of each item. The key thing here is that you're drawing separate bars. So I'm just going to have my graph right there. I've got my categories. Now one important thing about bar graphs is that we can see chalk those right here. That is also the first right here. However, in a bar graph, it doesn't really matter the order. Um, you can kind of move. We could have chocolate over here and strawberry right here, or mint chip could be first. It's not going to change the data that is being shown. And so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little bar for each of these things. So if we have eight chocolate, I'm going to go up here to eight. I'm going to come down with my bar. I'm going to kind of shade it in a little bit. We've got that for vanilla. We can see we have seven. So I'm going to make a separate bar. Again, this is really important that the bars are not touching. Strawberry, we have five. And then mint chip, we have ten. Okay, so. Not the most perfect graph, but you can see bar graph right there. We're showing the frequency. Very common to look at, very easy to understand. So some pros and cons between both of these. You can see they're kind of similar looking in some ways. Um, one thing, pros, this is useful for visualizing the frequency and how data is centered. So we can really see kind of that curve right there we've been talking a little bit about. We can also see measures of central tendency. So for example, if we wanted to calculate the median, we could look and we could see there are 16 pieces of data, so I could simply just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That means right there, that would be where our median is. So we could see that our median equals 7. We could also really quickly calculate the mode. See, that's the tallest stack. That is also 7. We could figure out the mean by adding all these values together by adding you know, 1 plus two fours, and, you know, we could add all together, divide by 16. So we can figure those out. Now some cons, this is really only for discrete or qualitative data categories. Um, you can't really do it for if you have a range or small decimals or a whole bunch of numbers. It's kind of tedious. So as I also said, time consuming to make for a large set of data or with a very large range. Um, over here for some pros and cons for bar graphs, useful for visualizing the frequency. It's simple, easy to understand, most common graph you're ever going to see. And it's, again, it's only for really discrete or qualitative data. 
Um, one last thing you can sometimes, because people can move the bars around, sometimes it can be used to be a little deceptive. It's not actually changing the data, but it can kind of try to make it look a certain way. And then the next two types of graphs we're going to talk about, stem and leaves um, and histograms, also somewhat similar to each other. So a stem and leaf shows and organizes, categorizes data in ascending order with all numeric values. Um, so what that means is let's say we had this list of scores on a math quiz and we wanted to figure out for each of those kind of how they relate and what they look like. Um, to do this, we're going to put the data in numerical order. This is not required, but I think it's really helpful and just kind of makes it easier to see. Then you're going to identify the values of the stems and the leaves. Now you can see I wrote up here often tens and often ones. So if you were thinking counting by tens, it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, right? And then the ones would be the ones plate ones value. So then I'm just going to draw a stem and leaf thing like this. And you can see the stem side will often be a little bit smaller and the leaf side will give you lots of space. Um, and we're just going to put those values in. So the stem goes on the left and the leaf goes on the right. So this is what that looks like. So I'm going to put a four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine on the left. Now this four right here does not actually represent a four. Again, it represents 40. So any value, so I have a 47 and a 48. So I'm going to put a seven comma and then an eight. So now this seven right here does not represent the number seven. It represents 47. This eight right here does not remember, represent the number eight. It represents 48. I'm going to continue on with all the other values I have. Now there were no 50s, so I'm going to leave the blank after those. In the 60s, we have 64 and we have 67. For the 70s, we had 71, 74, 75, 78, and 79. And then for the 80s, we had 82. We had another 82. We had an 83 and we had an 85. And then finally, for we had 90, we had 92, and we had 95. So we can see the values for each of those. Again, this helps us. You might think, why would we want to do this? Well, we can see really easily that, for instance, we had in the 70s, we have the most amount of data. And it's almost like a sideways bar graph. Now, you're also usually going to see a key in the bottom right-hand corner. That really just tells you that 4 on the line and 7 means 47. Um, because you could also use a stem and leaf, for instance, if I had 4.7, 4.8, 6.4. So it could be whole numbers, ones, and tenths over here. Um, that is called a histogram. This shows and groups data visually by intervals over a range. So it's kind of similar to a stem and leaf plot. So we're actually going to use the same data. And to do this, we're going to put the data in numerical order first. Again, my recommendation, not required. Um, 40s, 60s, 70s, 75. So we could split that up into either groups of like by fives or tens, twenties. Um, I think for this case it makes a lot of sense to just do it by tens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these I'm going to kind of think of the different groups of tens. So I've got those are split into tens. We've got these, got these ones right here, these, and then these. So I just kind of split up into tens. We can see two of those, two of those, five of those, four of those, and three of those. And we're going to use that to do our graph for a histogram. So I'm going to put the frequency numbers on the side, and then um, I'm going. Oops, didn't mean to put that up yet. I'm going to put two 40s. So I'm going to start right here where it says 40. I'm going to go up to where it says two. I'm going to go over, and then I'm going to come down. For the next thing, now you notice this is draw touching vertical bars. So there are two 60s. So I'm going to go from 50 to 60 is nothing, but from 60s we're going to go up here. Two of those. Then 70s, we can see we had 570, so I'm going to go up here to that. And then 80s, we had four of those. And then 90s, we had three of those. Um, you also often have those kind of shaded in. But we can see from this, we had a whole bunch of numbers, but now we've kind of made it simpler to look at, and we can kind of see the main kind of values. Um, we can see what was most common and that kind of thing. So the pros and cons, which I already accidentally put up, are your pros for a stem and leaf. It's useful for visualizing every piece of data. You can also calculate measures of central tendency in this. So let's say out of 16 pieces of data, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we would know that right here, 
that would be where our median would be in between the 8 and the 9, but remember that's 78 and 79. So you can see right there that our median would be 78.5. We could also figure out the mode really easily if we were looking at this because we can see there's two 82s. So the mode is going to be 82. We could also calculate the mean if we needed by adding all those values together and dividing by how many there are. However, if we were, let's say, looking over here at a histogram, we can't calculate that median and the mode because we can no longer see the individual values. Um, so right here, as I said, our cons, it doesn't include the individual values, so measures of central tendency can't be identified. Um, also, con of a stem and leaf plot, if you have a lot of numbers, it's gonna get kind of hard to look at and organize. Over here for a histogram, helpful for lots of large numbers, big sets of data. Um, key thing though, again, you wanna make sure those bars are touching and you're showing the intervals in between. So that's kind of the four main graphs that you're gonna be using in statistics, um, especially in sort of middle school style statistics, that we had the line plot, bar graphs, stem and leaf plots, and histograms.